Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. It is time. Let me tell you, it is time for the indoor arena football update, baby. I've been waiting for God knows how long to get this out. Been waiting for schedules, been waiting for rosters, been waiting for teams to drop like flies, been waiting for every single thing you could imagine to wait. Because again, I'm the last person to say my thoughts on things. Maybe Dukon too, but you know, Dukon doesn't really, you know, do videos in the offseason like that. But yeah, you're gonna see some takes from me tonight. You're gonna see some takes. Um, some, maybe some of them are a little bit hot, maybe some that are a little bit cold. It is what it is because I've been waiting for months. I've been waiting to say something. A lot of people are like, oh, well, why hasn't Big Boy said anything about this yet? And I said, hold on. Just wait a second. Just wait a second. Just hold your, just hold your horses. So everybody, and I'm talking the entire, every content creator, Every player, every coach, every fan, every owner, GM, super fan, whoever, spectator, reporter, whoever, click here. You're clicking here. You're watching this, and you're and you're going to see some thoughts from me tonight. Okay, okay. I'm just gonna be real with you. So let's start with the IFL. Now you look at that map and you see, well, there's Fishers. This Fishers freight. Hey. There's a couple teams missing here. There's a couple teams, you know, in New Mexico, another one in Texas, and another one in South Dakota. They're missing. Well, the IFL has decided, you know, we're going to roll with our 14 teams that we have. No, who cares about the Dakota Bucks? They are either not coming back or it's just like it's just it just doesn't matter right now. It doesn't matter about the Dakota Bucks right now. Okay. Frisco, unfortunately, just, you know, the Jermaine family was just like, you know, we're kind of done, you know, we're kind of done with this, basically, and they're trying to find somebody to get, you know, the fighters and get them either to Allen or somewhere else, but honestly, do you really want to go to Allen for anything other than high school football? Not particularly. I mean, the Allen Americans are up there, and a team that we're going to talk about in the near future on this channel in the um, the Dallas sidekicks are up there. But um, yeah, Frisco's going to go dormant for 2025. Same thing with Duke City. I know Duke City's owners have been kind of strapped for cash. And then they've been running like a CIF team basically the entire time they've been in the IFL. At this point, it was inevitable. Um, honestly, I think I think both Frisco and Duke City are kind of dead. You know, with the word dormant means a lot in the circles. Look, the only teams that came back from 2020, you know, you know, were the ones that played in 2020. Everybody else that played in 2020 came back to the ones, you know, that went on hiatus and was like, yo, we we're not playing in 2020. Everybody came back. Can't say the same for all these other teams, you know. Sioux Falls is just a matter of an arena situation. They cannot use the Sanford Premier Arena anymore. They could use the Sioux Falls Arena downtown, which is like uh, where Augustana plays, but that's a rather old arena, so they're just going to sit out for 2025. I have more faith in Sioux Falls coming back for 2026 than anything else. So, yeah, they should be fine in coming back. They just need to find an arena, like just – either somewhere. Again, the arena cost was a bit too high, but at the same time, you know, people were like, oh, well, it's about attendance and yada, 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 and going back and forth. Well, he didn't say, he didn't say this and yada, yada, and, and then the arena owners are like, well, they didn't say anything. They didn't say anything. Todd and them didn't say anything. So it's just going back and forth about some nonsense. Sioux Falls will probably get an arena deal done, hopefully. I, I hope they do. I really hope they do. Um, so that they can play in 2026. Moving on, I had to scrub something. Guess what? I had to scrub something. We'll talk about that team in a moment. But yeah, the NAL is rocking. 
you know, the IFL is going to start with a 16 game schedule. The NAL is going to stick with their 10 game schedule plus a non league game. And, you know, again, everybody's starting, you know, in March. So, you know, the AF1, which we'll talk about in a moment, starts the weekend of March 13th, I believe. Um, let me get my dates right first before I say something stupid. Um, but yeah. NAL is at 11 teams, so, you know, the additions, you know, from the AIF were bolstered by a couple of newcomers in the Shreveport Rougarou, the Beaumont Renegades, again, who were also from the AIF, the Amarillo Dusters, who were technically also from the AIF, you know, they rebranded, you know, they were the Benham before, but now they are the Dusters again, and, you know, which is good for them, yeah, and so these 11 will rock and roll for 2025, and I know, you know, I know the boys inside the walls, they're doing their thing, they're going on the road this year and all sorts of stuff, and, you know, they're doing all sorts of player interviews with NAL players and coaches and owners and, and even the commish, and they're doing a fantabulous job as, as I've continued to, you know, see them boys grow, you know, Jim, Jim and Crumpany, you know, yeah, I'm just going to be rude with y'all. Y'all keep doing what y'all do best, you know, which is continue to grow the NAL brand. And honestly, if the NAL, you know, wants to survive 25, 20, you thought I was going to, you thought I was going to just be, you know, just straight and glazing. No, 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 no. I don't do that. I've never done that. If the NAL is going to survive 2025, all 11 of these teams need to be staple, need to be fine, need to be paying their players. They need to be playing all of their games. Everything needs to go without a sitch because if something goes wrong in 2025, at some point, I'm going to be on the NAL's ass. I'm just going to be real with y'all. And that's why I haven't interviewed anybody from the NAL yet. That, that and because, you know, all the people I want to interview, you know, <laughs> they, it's already been covered. So, you know, no point me, you know, interviewing anybody from the NAL at this moment. But, yeah, um, you know, like I said, you know, there are solid foundations here. I'm, I'm a little worried about some teams, but, you know, again, 2025 should be the year that things get right, I hope. I hope so. I really hope so. Because you look at this roster of teams, you look at the coaches on some of these guys. Coach Rez, Coach Negron, you know, I mean, Ricky Burtz, you know, and company down in Omaha, you know. And I I forgot the coach's name for a second. Uh, it, it, it's neither here nor there. Well, yeah, lots of players are being signed. So the IFL signing players, I know Drew Powell's back in Arizona, you know. NAL signing players, lots of players are getting signed. Lots of players are signing on the dotted line. Make sure players, first off, make sure you read your contracts. Make sure you read your contracts. Make sure they're not verbal contracts. If they're verbal contracts, you are absolutely, you are boned. Get that in writing. Get that money in writing. And, you know, if you get cut after you know a certain couple weeks, make sure you get the money that you are promised. Just to be real with you, just to make a little bit of a stopping point here, real quick, just to get get your money. If you're going somewhere else, get your money. You know, if you're going to another league, get your money. Make sure you get your money because again, you know, the NAL, the AF1, you know, they're gonna stop playing. You know, around June, you know, when the NAL is going to stop in the middle of June. I believe it's a six to 18 playoff structure. I think it's eight. Don't quote me on that because I do remember Walking Horse saying that it was going to be a three-round playoff structure, but I don't know if it's going to be eight or six. I think it might be six. That's the better number for me, to be quite honest with you. I feel same old, same old with the eight teams, and that championship game, the IFL championship game, will yet again be last. It will be August 23rd, just to get that, get that out the way. August 23rd will be the IFL National Championship live in Tucson, of all places, for the next three years on CBS Sports Network. I know. NAL, again, YouTube, same thing with the IFL, YouTube, you know, local broadcasts, same thing, kind of, again. Uh, so, yeah, these are the top two leagues. These are the top two leagues for me right now, and number three is – 
right now it's the Arena League. Now I know uh, I couldn't I couldn't find a nice picture of you know where everything is like all together, all the teams are all together because I know I think Hot Springs or Eau Claire changed their logo. I think it was Hot Springs that changed their logo actually, and yeah, but yeah. Six teams, eight game season. So it will be, you know, May thirty, May thirtieth, thirty first. One of those days. It'll be the end of May, going all the way to July, and then August will be the playoffs yet again. And I believe that will also it'll, it'll still be four teams next year for the playoffs. And again, Duluth. I know the Duluth guys are, you know, ready for me to interview somebody from them again, and I'm hoping I can get somebody from one of the other. Arena League teams. I'm looking, definitely looking at the at the guy. Um, I believe he's like the CEO or something like that for Hot Springs. I think that's the one that's been posting on Twitter. He's been really been advertising on Twitter, but uh, don't quote me on that right now because I haven't named all the people I'm going to interview yet. So let me let me go on and move on to the AF1. Yes, the AF1. So. This season, we have 12 teams competing in the AF1. It will be a 12-game season over 14 weeks. Again, it'll be the middle of March, yeah, March 13th weekend, going all the way to June, you know, the middle of June, and I'm assuming whatever the championship game will be called, I'm assuming it's going to be an arena bowl, to be quite honest with you. That will be in July, and as you can see, the Oregon Lightning, the rebranded Oregon High Desert Storm are here. Billings is here. Washington's here. So all the teams, you know, and the Arizona Bandits, yes, they are also here. They are real. They are more than likely playing in Tempe. Um, again, the, the AF1, you know, also had a central division now. It's just the three Kansas teams plus a team that had a little bit of trouble in the NAL. Now, let me get this out the way. What both parties are saying here are more than likely valid. I'm not going to take sides here. What I am going to say is, is that this is kind of hilarious in hindsight that the Tritons were able to land in the AF1. Now, Tritons, you know, they were trying to work arena dates around so that, you know, the NAL could get their schedule out on time and stuff like that. You know, but ultimately, you know, things just didn't work out for them. And apparently they did not pay league dues. So the owners were like, get out. So that's exactly what Corpus Christi did. They started whining on social media. And a few days later, they get into the AF1. And they have joined the Central Division, which is just them and three Kansas teams in the East. Well, Albany, Orlando, Nashville, and Wilkes-Barre. Or there, Wilkes Bear still has no team name yet, so we'll wait on them to get a team name. Now, look, the AF1, the, the, the three divisions are going to play each other three times. So, three, so you have four teams in one division, you're going to play three teams three times, and then three other teams once. So, that makes our 12 games. Uh, NAL schedule is absolutely cursed. Uh, don't, even, don't even ask me about it. The IFL schedule also cursed. Don't even ask me about it. This one makes a little bit more sense, even though it's still kind of stupid in hindsight. I'm just going to be real with you. You don't it, – it must lead to this small, but I get it at the same time to save on travel costs. I get it. I get it. So not going to not gonna moan and cry too much about the AF1 schedule. I'm not going to moan and cry too much. I'm excited. I'm happy it's out. Um, there was a whole slew of release shows. And of course, nobody invited me to the one of them, so I'm, I'm just gonna just not gonna be salty about it. But again, I, I was not feeling that great, you know. Anyway, for one and two, I have other stuff to do, so you know, I'm a very busy person, so I don't I don't always dedicate my time to doing this, you know. It's what we dedicate, you know, or Tuesdays in 2025 for. So, yeah, this is, is this is going to be interesting because again. The Firebirds have loaded up basically, and they are looking to take the AF1 championship, you know, rest it from Billings' shoulders, you know, if they can continue to take on the players that they've been taking on. They even stole Sam Castronova, you know, from the NAL and the IFL, 
you know, from like he's been playing in the NF in the NAL and IFL the past couple of years. So uh yeah. Firebirds are looking like a strong contender, but I'm not gonna give predictions right now. I'm gonna wait until March. I'm gonna wait till March to give some predictions on that. Next up are the teams that are not playing in 2025. Again, Storm are not playing due to arena issues. The Fighters are not playing due to, you know, just multiple things. The Jermaine family really kind of not being into the indoor game anymore. And Duke City's just kind of broke. Stockton and Monterey are the other two AF1 teams that were announced, you know, in addition to, again, the other new teams like the Bandits and Wilkes Bear and, 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 you know, but and Corpus Christi and yeah, they're not playing in 2025 and they're just like, okay, we're not going to play in 2025 because we're going to, we need some more time to prepare and we're going to go dormant. And usually what that means, again, usually what that means when you go dormant, you know, usually means you don't come back. So if these were teams that were announced and don't play. That's going to, again, I'm going to laugh at this. I'm going to absolutely go feral and go crazy at this we, we, we get we get to the same you know time in 2026 i'm gonna go i'm gonna go crazy but if these two teams you know get it together they should be fine monterey is a bit of a weird situation because again arena football has already been tried in monterey it's already been tried in mexico and it didn't work but I'm not going to get mad. I'm not going to get mad today. I'm not going to get mad today. So, you know, Monterey, if it works out, you know, good. Stockton, same thing. If it works out, it's good. But if it doesn't, I'm going, I'm going to go ape shit. I'm, I'm just going to be real with you guys. So next and basically last but not least, the leagues that you need to be looking at right now, these lower level leagues that you need to be looking at right now. The AL2 is adding teams left and right. The UIFA has been a disaster. The PAIA has been a disaster. The WIF basically trading teams, the UIFA. So, you know, just keep that in mind, you know. And the MAFL, too. They've been dropping teams left and right. There's been fights going on. Again, these are the kind of leagues that I definitely am way more wary of than anything, like you have the Dallas Falcons and the Southern Steam, well, the Southern Scream, or whatever you want to call them now. They're in the PAIA now. Again, all those teams that West Michigan beat up on, you know, in the Great Lakes Arena football, they are either in the MAFL or the UIFA or the WIF. Um, and some have even reached over to the AL too, like the Pittsburgh Outlaws are in the AL too right now. And again, these these leagues have teams that fluctuate every single week, and it's hard to keep track. It's very hard to keep track because these leagues do not post even remotely consistently, or you know, just other factors of you know, little to no pay or playing fields that are not actually arenas. And I need to stress that soccer plexes are not arena football fields. They're not. You're playing in warehouses and soccer plexes and nonsense like that or outdoor tight links where you set up dangerous dasher boards and you play outside and it's disgusting. I don't care what anybody says. That is how I feel about that. these kinds of things. So these... The MAFL, I already saw an interview with, with them. You know, Shady um, did an interview with the guy that runs the MAFL. If he can get the MAFL, you know, to where, you know, they can actually cultivate some teams of their own, you know, that'd be fine. But for now, it's rough. It's going to be a rough look, I'll tell you right now, because things have been looking rough. So. For my 2025 plans real quick, um, as far as interviews go, I have some space available at the moment. I have some space available on a couple different days, you know, in January and February, maybe March, but March is um, spring break week. I'm just going to be real with you. I'm not going to be, you know, more than likely... Um, 
course of action is I will not be in the United States during um, a week stretch of spring break. I'm not going to be in the country at all. Um, you know, I don't really need to know why I'm not in the country. Um, I'll be in the UK, you know. So, but yeah, um, honestly, I do have a couple targets already. Again, like I said, it's either the Hot Springs, the Eau Claire owner that or a CEO that's doing stuff on Twitter. I want, I want, I want you to be that guy. Off the wall football, Trey of off the wall. If you are watching, yes, we already had a little small discussion, you know, a couple weeks ago. I think you didn't recognize. You know, my profile picture. I think he didn't recognize my profile picture is the same as my Discord. You know, he didn't recognize it. So he didn't recognize that it was big boy sports, you know, or, you know, just kind of have the course correct, you know, some things. Because there were some guys up in that um, Twitter space that were just kind of, you know, they were they were definitely talking, you know. They, they, they definitely know what they were doing, you know. But, you know, I just did, I did have to say some, something in there, you know, I just wanted to shoot the shit and talk to the boys, you know, about, you know, some indoor arena football on a, on a, on a college football Tuesday night or Wednesday night. I think it was like a Tuesday or Wednesday night or something like that, but it was Halloween, I think. But yeah. So those are my first two targets for interviews so far. So just letting you guys know who those two guys are um, right off the bat. So sometime in January, you know, it'll be like, you know, like the middle of January, late January, somewhere around that time when I'll be, you know, conducting my first couple interviews again. Um, I think I haven't said it yet, you know, where we're going to at least have six. I do not want to do interviews every single week. Um, I cannot do that. That, that takes up. That's a lot of pressure on me. And I do not want to put any more pressure on myself than I haven't already put on. Because again, we're expanding the amount of content that's on this channel already with some of the other sports that I'm talking about in the near future, like soccer, you know, not just the MASL like I had previously announced, but the NWSL as well, or volleyball, or, you know, hockey, or any you know, other sports like lacrosse or anything like that. So, yeah, um, again, I didn't probably didn't get everything accurate, but this is this is about as close as I can get to accuracy and as close as I can get to an update that sounds reasonable. Um, again, follow all of these leagues at some point, support them again, you know, the lower level leagues again, support them in some way. You know, and try to get them into actual arenas. That's kind of the main goal. Trying to get these guys out of you know being playing you know bus rides in Michigan and going to play the IFL, the UFL, the CFL, or the NAL, or the AF1, or any of these other leagues. You know that can actually you know pay a little bit more than what they're currently having. Um, the IFL again, you're still the top dog? Question mark. But you got to prove it to me because, again, these 14 teams, you know, are strong. But are they strong enough to counter the momentum of the NAL? And can the NAL stay consistent? You know, a lot of people are like, hey, the NAL's adding a lot of these teams. And then, you know, something happens. So they need to be consistent. That's my thing. The TAL, the Arena League, Tim Brown's Arena League, you guys just keep chugging along. You guys have been doing great for the most part, you know. Um, but again, don't lose momentum there either. So you guys don't lose momentum. AF1, you guys have been killing it on social media. But again, do not lose sight of the goal. Do not lose sight of momentum. And everybody else, keep your heads high. Keep it churning. And I'll see you all again very soon, man. Because, I mean, man. That, that 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 there's this it's gonna be a long wait until March, I'll tell you that much. So if anything happens between now and March, you know, if a team folds or something like that, or a team, you know, just gets a little bit, you know, antsy and stuff, we'll talk about it in March at this point. Cause I'm not gonna make another video right now. I'm not going to. I'm, I'm really kind of tired. I'm really again, I'm still kind of sick too. So 
you know, for now, I'm going to get on out y'all's hair. And again, again, support all these leagues, players, owners, coaches, you know, support everybody, support all the content creators. Do, do as I say, not as I do. You know what I'm saying? You know, just be, make this community a much better place to be. Because again, you know, there have been some years, again, I was the only one talking in 2020. I was the only one that said anything about, you know, the nonsense that happened in 2020. And I will continue to say that. I was the only one that said anything about, you know, what happened in 2020. And in 2021, we got all these different guys coming in and so on and so forth over the next couple of years. And I'm glad that they're all here. I'm glad that the arena football spear has got bigger again. I'm glad. I really am. You know, I'm glad that we got, you know, four or five different leagues, you know, that actually makes sense again. Remember, 2018, we, we had like 18 teams, you know, across three leagues that matter. Now we have like four or five that matter and like 50. So in any case, I'm going to get on out y'all's hair and I'm going to go make some pasta and go to sleep. And again, y'all have a good night. Um, hope you enjoyed the double upload too. So yeah, get out your hair.